Hi, I'm Russ Camarda, an actor and independent filmmaker in New York. And in between the chances I get to do my own creative projects, I love to sit down with other artists and discuss how it is they do what they do. And that's sort of the, the goal for this podcast, the ACT podcast, Art, Craft, Truth. This time around, our conversation brings us to Federico Castelluccio, actor, director, filmmaker, a painter. You may know him best for his role as Furio on the landmark HBO series, The Sopranos. But he's got dozens and dozens of, of, of film credits, television credits, and incredible stories to tell as an artist. I hope you enjoy this conversation as much as I did with him. Federico Castelluccio. Oh, Federico. Thank you, my brother. Thank you for having me on. See how easy that I mean, was. Jesus, how, man, how long has this been? I mean, that, that we, we wanted, haven't wanted to get together. I know right? it's been. Well, I started these things like five years ago. So yeah, I know. Which I think is the time. I think that's when we worked together. Was around five years ago. Yeah. Well, yeah, 2016. Yeah. Yeah. So that was five years. Fantastic. Maybe. That was. Uh, it started. We're we're gonna bounce around the timeline yeah, yeah. here, but for yeah. us, it started. That was a short film you did. Right. Called Lily of the Feast. And That's then right. it blew up into a feature, which was, I think, was that your directorial debut at that point? It was my featured directorial featured, debut. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Lily of the Feast was, was great. Uh, Michael Rossigliano, writer that I met, uh, came to me with that uh, project. And I saw it, and I thought it really, uh, it, was, it was meritorious. I thought it was really well written. Right. And, uh, but I said, you know, there are some things you have to change in, in this. You can't, you know, for a short film, right. in order to do a feast, <laughs> it's going to be very expensive, right. you know. What was the feast? What was the Italian feast? Uh, La Festa di, well, um, the, La Festa del Giulio. The Giulio. The, Gi the Giulio, yes. That's right. Right, right, right yeah. <laughs> that 40 Where they put the thing with the band right. on top of it, right? <laughs> right. The and they have to carry it? All the guys have to right? carry it? Is that, is that an amazing thing? To yeah. See, to watch these guys walk it down And the when street? we went, uh, when we met to do it, you had me come down to Williamsburg for the feast, but before we started shooting it, to That's watch right. those guys do it, it was crazy. That's right. Incredible. That's right, well, that was a blast, man. I always appreciated you uh, popping me on that. And well, I, I you know, um, I love great talent, and um, uh, you know, have to have to say that you're a wonderful actor. Thank oh, thanks, you. man. I appreciate. And thank it. you for doing such a great job on those on those films. Oh, it was really a blast, and I got to meet great people. I got to meet Artie, our <laughs> buddy, and all those all those great actors. <laughs> that, was, that was a blast. Wow. So let's talk about uh, about art and craft with, uh, sure. with a great art uh, artist and great craftsman. What a lot of people don't know, but people know you. Obviously, we're going to get to you know your years mm -hmm. on Sopranos and things like that. That's where they most people will remember the face and the name. Although you're accomplished everywhere else, but what people don't know is that you are uh, you started as a visual artist, as a painter. It's true, right? And yeah. you still are. Obviously, we're in your studio here, as you can see, is uh, filled with incredible works that you've collected and worked on. Um, but before we get to that, uh, you were born in Italy. I was born in Italy, yes, in Naples. In Naples. Uh, my father uh, was uh, born in the Campania region, which was a place called Torre Orsaia, Tower of the Bears. I don't know where that came from. Okay. But, uh, I'm sure there's some interesting history behind that. And uh, it, was, uh, it was in the region of Naples, and then, you know, he moved to Naples. But uh, he met my mother uh, when, um, when he was stationed in the army in Bari. And, um, you know, and so that's, uh, they got married, we moved back to Naples, uh, my older brother and sister, Ines and Antonio, were born in, uh, in Bari, and uh, I was born in Naples with my brother, Marco. And when did you come to here? Was uh, a little kid? Yeah, I was, I was only like, uh, I think, three and a half in 1968, man. All right. There you yeah, go. 68. There's a hell of a year to come into uh, the United States. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Uh, but, uh, and we where did kids. you settle? The, here in Jersey or where? We settled, yeah. We had family here. We had, right. uh, my, my grandparents were here. Uh, my maternal grandparents, and then uh, and uh, my aunts and uncles and stuff. So everybody was. I think they had the at the time um, there was a law that where you can actually call your your, your relatives over. Yes. You know. Right. 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 And uh, they could you know uh, eventually get a green card and right. and get citizenship. So. Did you have the typical uh, East Coast Italian upbringing we all had, where it's uh, everybody's over the house all the time and Sunday of dinner and yeah, you of course it was. Uh, you know what it was. It was. Uh, Growing up in the United States as an Italian, <laughs> right? You know what I mean. It's right. uh, I always I, I always use this kind of analogy. I mean, during Thanksgiving, there's a turkey there, but everything else is Italian. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know. Yep. And the I mean, look, man, I'm telling you, 
when you have someone from, from Italy that has been cooking since she was like 16 years old, like my mom, <laughs> let me tell you, uh, it's people just don't forget the meals they've had. Oh, no way. Well, that's, that's, that's the formation of, of my whole childhood. It's all the same, the same uh, uh, influences and, and having that, that Sunday dinner every uh, yeah, you know, and the sauce yeah. and all that stuff. That's, Absolutely. That's the New York uh, but I, East Coast I, experience. When I say I grew up Italian, I mean, I grew up speaking Italian. Well, that, I was going to ask you that because yeah. you, uh, you speak fluent Italian, but you told me yeah. you came over as a little kid. So how, that's all they spoke in the house? Well, or? that's all. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's actually, that was my first language was Italian. Wow. When I when I came here, that's all we spoke, and then I you know started going to school, and I would come home like you know, saying a couple of English sentences. And my mother goes, "No, no, in in the house you speak Italian." Really? <laughs> yeah, that's well, that was great because she wanted us to retain our language. She right. wanted us to retain our culture, and uh, you know I, I I thank her till this day uh, because it it ultimately. Um, uh, was uh, was instrumental in a lot of uh, parts that I got later on in life. Was it hard as a kid? Sorry. Was it hard as a kid? You know, having to do that, going to school and oh, kind of being the Italian well, it kid. Was, uh, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was a bit difficult. Uh, you know, my name is. You know, I was born with the name Federico, right? right, right. Federico. So um, when I was in, when I, I guess it was kindergarten or something like that. Uh, they, you know, they have you like have you write your name, right. right? So the teacher said, oh, this is the way you write your name. And it was Freddie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, like, and so, you know, on the streets, they called me Freddie. Right. And then at home, it was always Federico. Right. You know? Wow. So, um, but uh, later on in life, you know, when you kind of like, you're always kind of searching like who you are and you know, sure. like, who am I? What, what, you know, what's my purpose here? And like, you're looking for your identity. And, right. uh, my identity was always there. It was always Federico, you right. know what I mean? Right, right, and right. And so that's when I, I was always, when I had decided that, it was always kind of like uh, an embarrassing thing for me. I was very shy to sure. tell somebody, you know, I prefer to be addressed, you know, by my right, real name, right. Federico. So when I got into uh, the School of Visual Arts, that's when I, I, I really made that decision. And I said, you know what? I have to have that confidence and just, right. you know, when people call me, I said, you know, please address me by my real name. Which right, is right. That's fantastic. Well, that's a great segue. How did, how did, before you get into School of Visual Arts, were you always, did you always have sort of that bent towards the arts when you sure. were a kid, as a little kid? What stuff? I did, I did. Um, you know, my, I think everyone in my family pretty much has, uh, is artistically inclined in some way. Uh, you know, my sister was always great with, Fashion drawing and uh, my brother uh, Antonio, he was uh, he was he was an excellent painter, excellent artist, and he went to he went to school for it, uh, but dropped out, took photography and stuff. Uh, and then uh, Marco, my brother Marco, is a phenomenal musician. But I always I was always very visual since I was a little kid. Right. You know, when I was in Naples, I remember you know the way the light came in from each each <laughs> room. You know, the right. memories I have of that were, you know, from like a little kid, you're looking at a doorknob height. And I remember the doorknobs that, you know, kind of like right. opened like this. And that's what I put in my house, too, because of that. And, um, and so uh, I was always very visual. And then when I would watch my sister or my brother draw something, I would get so excited. I was, I was like, it was an excitement that you... you uh, and overly excited. I don't know how to explain it, but interesting. Yeah, and so it it, it hit me inside, right? You know, and this was something that I guess I knew was going to be part of my yeah, life. Yeah, I mean, if you're feeling that at that age, yeah. that's un unusual to get that kind of electricity I, out of that. Stuff. I have an incredibly vivid memory of my childhood in Naples. My, I was only three and a half when we left. It's that chiaroscuro lighting coming in, just influencing your whole. Uh, <laughs> your yeah, whole... no, that's true. I think light. Yeah. Uh, and objects and things always kind of influenced me, you know? right. and they still do. So when you so you decide to go to the School of Visual Arts to be a painter, to be a visual, what what yeah what? Um, uh, okay, let me back up a little bit. Sure, because, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, you know, when I was a kid, I was I, I thought at least I thought I was pretty good with impressions. You know, I would do like <laughs> cartoons, you know, cartoon right, right. characters, and you know, and then I, I would love to watch this guy, Rich Little. Rich Little was yeah. a great impression. He was the big impression in the and, 70s, yeah. And so I would, I, would, I would try to do impressions after Rich Little, right, right. <laughs> watching him do the impressions. Doing Nixon. And, and Nixon, know. exactly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. 
Right. Yeah, yeah right, exactly. So, you know, so uh, I always had that in the back of my mind. And then I would watch films or television shows or whatever. And I would see somebody that was my age. And I would always get, not jealous, but kind of envious that I wanted to be a part of it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You know, that's a kid thinking, right, you know? Right, right. But it was, it was different thinking than my Other friends. Other kids, absolutely. Because I would always say to them, I said, well, don't you want to be a part of that? Don't you want to be, no, they're like, no. <laughs> uh, you know, it's like, you're weird. I'm like, no, nah, it's, it's just really cool. It's a fantasy. You go into it. It's a world. That's, that's what films okay. gave me. Right, right, right. You know, they sure. gave me this, this sort of place where you go into and you forget about it for an hour. Right, you know? right. You just uh, forget about everything behind you. Yes. So you're a kid with a, with a, a performance uh, a vibe, an electricity for just wanting to be part of it. But how do you transition? What, what makes you go into putting things on canvas? I'll on tell paper? you. Yeah. Tell you what it, it turns out that uh, the high school I went to, and I was always looking forward to going to having sort of a, um, a theater program, mm -hmm. you know? And so I figured, you know, uh, my grammar school, you know, the first play I ever did was, <laughs> can I, can I tell you a little story about Please, that? Please, absolutely. Play, I, right? Yeah. First play I ever did was, um, was, you know, it was sort of like a Christmas play, you know, sure. and there was this girl in the class who I was very attracted to. It's, That's usually know, how first, it starts, Federico. In the first grade. <laughs> That's usually how we get into this business. <laughs> yeah. Her name was, you know, her name was Sher Sharia Volio, right? So Sharia Volio played Mary. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> and so, <laughs> and they got me to play Joseph. Oh boy! So yeah, my my sister helped me with the costume. You know what I mean? And then right. I had to have a beard, right? <laughs> and you you know you take the scotch tape and you twirl it around. You put the beard on. But I was so nervous around this girl that I was sweating and the beard kept falling off. So I was like doing this kind of thing, you know. <laughs> and I had to like do my lines right. and you know. And the, the nun kept telling me to just say, you know. Take your hands away from there. He goes, now, okay, now you put your hand around her. So I put my hand around there you go. her, but I, it was hovering over her shoulder. <laughs> and the nun kept coming down and pressing my arm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was kind of my, my first, it's you know, first surge. Well, it's usually, like I said, it's usually the, 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 uh, the pretty actress across the way. You know, right, right. You want to get into the theater program. <laughs> yeah, it was my first foray into, uh, into, into theater, into acting. Into acting. But... Um, when I when I realized that there was no art no theater, theater program, program there, I really just you know focused on art. I mean, I really because you know, your brother was it your brother or your who was the artist? My brother Antonio. Yeah, Antonio. he uh, yeah he uh, he went to a couple of years of uh, of art school. Right. Uh, and he was always great. I was always inspired by him. Yeah. You know, um, and he did this one painting that's in the other room that I you know <laughs> that I have. Uh, it's it's fantastic. It's of of uh, of, of a, a woman, well, she's a comara, you know, a comara yeah, that, yeah. that, you know, uh, in Italian, comara means different things. Okay, okay all right. Co comara is someone who baptizes, you know, who's there, baptizes the kid. There's a comara and a compare, right? Mm -hmm. And they're the ones who kind of like are the i padrini, the, the right. godfathers. Like the godfathers, right. right. Yep. So, so um, the Greeks have a similar, thing. yeah, it's yeah, all that same exactly culture. Right? So we had we, we had uh, Comara Angela who was with us, who stayed. She's very old, but she was uh, she had an interesting face, interesting feature. And my brother uh, did did this painting. He, he painted her from life at ten years old, oh, wow. and it looks like I'm telling you, it looks like an impressionist master. That, wow. that, that, you know, uh, I'll show you later. Sure, sure, yeah. It really is. He was fantastic. I've always been inspired by him, oils and stuff, you know. When, um, you know, when I, I didn't know what, how to work with oils, so right. I, you know, found some of his oils one day and I started, started playing around with it. And I'm like, man, these things never dry. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, you know, I, I threw the painting up, you know, up on the, 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 uh, the bureau. And later on, I looked at it and I'm like, wait a minute. This is not that bad. <laughs> ah. So it, after it dried, I was like, okay, now this thing does actually dry. Right, right, think, right, you know? right, right. But um, yeah, it was it was always kind of you know an inspiration kind of thing. So uh, so it so it was always painting though that painting. particular yeah. not sculpting not no drawing drawing and, drawing and painting drawing and painting. So when did you go to SVA? Uh, uh, early, 1982. Early I, I graduated from high school and I won a full scholarship, presidential scholarship to the School of Visual wow. Arts 
based on a portfolio that I had built right. in high school and, um, and a hands-on exam. And they gave away, I think, you know, 16 scholarships or something like that nationwide. Right. Uh, or was it worldwide? Worldwide, I think. So at this anyway. time, at 20-something years old, what are the things, I mean, I'm sure there's things that when you're in a, a, a conservatory situation like that, you have to produce some work on. But personally, what are you doing? What kind of stuff are you painting? What is intriguing you? What, what, okay. What's your, when I, what's your thing? When I went to school Back then, when you're a kid, when you start, what, is, what are the things you're painting right off the bat that turn you on? What do you mean, before I went to School of Visual no, Arts? No, when you're in, as a young adult, in the School of Visual Arts. School of Visual you're, Arts. Okay. When you're really refining your craft there. Yeah, well, I, I, I was always um, kind of uh, attracted and uh, inspired by the masters, you know, the 17th century. For some reason, 17th century really spoke to me, hmm. 16, from 1610 to 16, you know, 90s, and uh, some, some 18th century stuff, but right. uh, mainly it was the... the uh, a little bit of the Renaissance, the late Renaissance, right. and all of the Baroque period. You think it's the light from your childhood? <laughs> I think so. It could <laughs> you be. know, what, what, something is something's it, it reaching back. Be. Yeah, it could very well be. Um, that, that's one of the things that I've always responded to in paintings: was right. the light and shadow, light, light and know? shadow contrast, uh, and and how well that artist achieved it. But uh, when I when I was in school, you know, uh, I really focused on um, copying the masters. You know, I had, I had taken anatomy classes for about four years. Right, right. Um, some great teachers I had there, Andy Gernt and uh, uh, Steve Smelka. And then live model painting, live model drawing. Mm. You, know, you know, just four years of right. really studying. And then art history, humanities. Um, and then, of course, my own studies. Right. Uh, you know, they didn't, they didn't really focus in on one particular, sure. uh, you know, time period in, in, in art. They gave you more of a gamut. Right. I'm the one who really kind of focused in on what I loved, which was the 17th century. Now, what are you thinking you're going to do at that point when you get out of the, where, where, where well, is this going to take okay, you? Okay, so back then, in order to make money as an artist, right, to make that's, a living. Is that, that's a contradiction in terms, isn't it? Make money. That is. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, that's, right. that's very true. Yeah. And then I be, you know, decided to become an actor. <laughs> Right, out of work. Stable, yeah, right. it's a very stable career. Right, exactly. <laughs> so, um, no, I. Um, in order to make money, what did you? Yeah, no, I, 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 you know, I said in order to make a living, I really focused in on illustration. Okay. So I became an illustrator. Now, right before I ever, I, right before I went into the School of Visual Arts, I was working part time, you know, in the afternoons, uh, and I was getting credit in at high school, you know, in high school. Um, for uh, doing illustrations at the newspaper in Patterson. So I, I would go there, you know, in the afternoon and do illustrations. And one day, um, this reporter came in and said, and she was very excited. She said, hey, you know, I'm going to be interviewing George Burns. And so I was in the corner, it was this like, little cubicle, and my art director is right next to me, Lynn Bins. And she says, uh, she goes, I'm going to be interviewing this thing. And I said, "Whoa, hey, wouldn't that wouldn't it be a great idea if a young artist did a portrait of you know?" <laughs> sure. <and> like, <laughs> Absolutely. She's like, "Who is this guy?" <laughs> and so um, she she left. And like, I guess that wasn't a good idea. But she thought about it. And said, "You know," it, it, she goes. She made a few phone. She comes back and she says, "Listen, made a few phone calls and uh, about your idea." I go, "I'm thinking, what idea?" Well, yeah, what did, what I, did I say? She goes, uh, "You have one week to do that painting of George Burns." Wow. So. I, I'm like, I was blown away. I said, you kidding me? She goes, no, and you're going to present it to him next week. Wow. And it's going to be a story. Wow. And so I researched his life, bought a book on uh, his biography, went to a place called Jerry Olinger's in New York City on 14th Street, found as many pictures as I could find, <laughs> created this painting, and we presented it to him. Did and you do the George Burns of, the, of that current time or the Grace Allen George? Like what George That's Burns a good question, yeah. actually. Uh, like was a young I did, mind... I did a montage of his life. All right. I did... You know his, you know him standing in the center with his proverbial cigar. Right. Then his vaudeville years. Uh, then when he was with Gracie, but I heard he, he was always very emotional about Gracie, so I only used him. Him, right. And then at in the top corner, I, I used him when he was won his first Oscar. Wow. For Oh God, I believe. Yeah, Oh God, that's yeah. right. So um, and he was uh, when he when he saw the painting, he was completely beside. I mean, he, when I saw him walking <laughs> towards me, I'm like, oh shit, man, I got his likeness. I totally got it. You right. know, and I was. A, I was a high school kid. Was I 18 or 18, something? 18, sure. Uh, and, so, 
And so he had two friends from vaudeville and they were like, oh, this is absolutely beautiful. And it was, it was, it was great. It was a great feeling, yeah. you know, going into, you know, had just won the scholarship and then had done this. So he told the person who had, uh, who had uh, arranged that entire thing. It was, it was a, it was a dinner at the Plaza Hotel. I remember we, we presented it to him. It was me and the reporter, uh, Rody Alexander, her name was. And, um, uh, he, uh, he said to Frank Goodman, who was the guy who put that entire dinner together, uh, he said, uh, please, let's, let's do something for the kid. And so that's, he, I started that's, doing illustrations crazy. for uh, PBS, wow. MS, uh, for uh, NBC, CBS, all the major networks, movie posters, wow. th- you know, all kinds of illustrations. While right. even before I was working professionally while right. I was going through school. You know, a lot of people don't realize that's a great point that they're listening and watching this is that's a lot of how the arts work it's not like uh becoming a doctor or becoming a brain surgeon you know there's a sort of hierarchy of things you do our business is all i met this guy he said let's do something for the kid i liked what he did let's put him in it and and your circles kind of increase and it's it's fascinating that that happened at that age with that kind of a connection but that's how it works for us all the time it it was uh yeah, it was an incredibly memorable time, and uh, the, then the article came out, and uh, it was cool because a lot of people in, in my town, Patterson, New Jersey, right. you know, had found out about it and stuff. But uh, yeah, no, you, you know, and, and it was nice because you hear things in Hollywood all the time: take care of the kid, do this, blah, blah, and it never gets and done. Then, oh well, yeah, that's the other, <laughs> that's the other half of it too. Most of the time, it doesn't get done, but sometimes right. it does. So we're gonna—I promise to everybody watching and listening—we're gonna get into the, the great acting and directing and filmmaking stuff. But to stick with the painting now. Sure, sure. As a craft, because you, you're still working, I see you working all the mm-hmm. time. Um, has, first of all, has your approach to when you start a project changed from that time? And absolutely. And in what, like, when you're, because I have, I am completely alien to mm-hmm. that world. What is it? Is it you see a picture in your head, you pick up a brush, and there's a thing. Where's the inspiration, and how do you begin? Yeah, as an artist. you can really, um, you can start a painting so many different ways. Right. Uh, when I was illustrating, the time factor was, was an issue. I mean, they, right. you know, art directors wanted it yesterday. <laughs> right. So, uh, and, and you know, you're, you're starting a painting from scratch. So what happens is they will send you uh, some photographs. Uh, let's say if it's for a television show, they'll, they'll send you photographs of these particular characters that they want, you know, uh, that, you know, that they want featured. So, you know, you'll, you'll do some sketches. You'll do like two to three preliminary sketches, send it in, and then they'll pick one, and then you'll work off of that. So okay. you'll work off of the drawing that you did, the composition, right. and also the, the photographs, and that's how you're getting the likenesses so the, the from illustration the illustration is a lot more structure going in. You're, yeah, there's it, more, yeah. The illustration map, is yeah. definitely, but when I was working on my own paintings, right. uh, you know, you have... You know, you have more time. There's more leisure to it. Uh, I would start always from life. I would always set up a still life or a person like you're sitting right. in front of me. Light it properly, however you want it. You know, bounce some light, and and then just start drawing with the brush. Okay. You know, and then you know start filling in colors, and then just work your way out. It's almost I I I, I compare it sometimes to uh, sort of like an a script. Like, okay. you get a script, a set of words, you have no idea what it's about. <laughs> you start reading it and you start formulating right. ideas, right? Right. As an actor, sure. right? You start formulating ideas. It's just like an empty canvas. Okay. You start sketching it out. And, and the more you sketch it out and the more you refine it, it becomes very clear what that is, right. what that image is. Right. I'm interested to, the, to go back to that real kernel, though. Uh, like for, for musicians, you know, the, the, in, in a similar way, they'll, I was talking to a couple of different ones, and they just sort of, they just start playing, and then they riff off a, off a melody. And yeah. So is it the same thing? Are you, are you picking a, a something to look at, or something catches your eye, or, or, or is it a, something you definitely want to work on? How does the... Yeah, it's, it, 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 like I said before, inspiration comes from so many different places. Right. Um, you know, uh, if I see a landscape, you know, uh, like a bucolic kind of thing that it inspires me, I might want to do it. If I see, you know, I, I, artists largely get inspired by other artists. Yes, true. You know, that's true. And so I, um, there's, 
there have been artists that inspired my work over the years, and I can, you know, now looking back, I can see that <laughs> inspiration that right. that sort of creeped into my own work. Right. Uh, Is it still the masters from that? The, that some contemporary artists. Oh, okay. Yeah, some contemporary artists. There was an artist by the name of Brault Brault, who, uh, it's a funny little story about Brault. Um, I had seen a lot of Time, you know, Time covers, Magazine, TV, yeah, yeah, TV Time Guide covers back in school. And I didn't even know how to pronounce this guy's name because it's the way he signed it. I thought right. it was Brad Brault. I don't know. How, you know it's, I couldn't even make out what he was signing. But... I read that his, he, was, uh, he was in the class. Actually, I didn't read that he was in, in the School of Visual Arts teaching. I happened to walk into a classroom that I had taken the semester before, thinking it was the classroom that I was supposed to go in. And it was a different classroom. And there was a bunch of people hover, hovered around this one guy showing his portfolio and talking about it. So I'm, I'm looking over everyone's shoulder, and I'm like, oh my god, there's, there's this guy, Brault Brault. <laughs> he, he's teaching here. So. I'm asking him all the questions. All the other people are asking him, how much did you make with that? How much? <laughs> I'm yeah. like, let me ask you something. What kind of brush did you use? And, you know, I was, I was asking really technical things like, how the hell did you get those really fine lines and everything? And he finally, after the third or fourth question, he looks up at me, he goes, he goes, are you in my class? <laughs> I go, no. He goes, he goes, well, then you're going to have to get registered. You're going to have to go in and get registered. Wow. So I go down to registrars and it was filled. Wow. It was, it was, it couldn't, I couldn't get in. So I'm like, oh, God, man. I, I, so a couple of days later, or a week later, I, I run into him on the street. And I said, hey, Brad. And he, he's walking away. I'm like, hey, Brad. He finally turns around. He goes, have you ever heard of a Brad from Holland? <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, this guy is really uptight. And back then, I was dressed like a, like basically, I mean, I was really long, long hair, hair yeah. leather jacket, boots. You know, <laughs> and it's like you just go there as a kid. You just, you know. And so he's looking at me. He's like, this guy can't be serious. So I said, listen, I, you know, I would really love to show you my work, you know, and uh, see if I could, you know, maybe get into one of your classes. He goes, he goes, all right, listen, why don't you come to my drawing class next week and, um, you know, show me what you got. So I didn't know this at the time, but he was incredible. This guy's, you know, when you have a professional that is looking to get professional work yeah. coming in and you're seeing like crap all the time, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? Like student and then uh, finishing paintings and yeah. not finishing work. I was incredibly disciplined, man. I was already working professionally, you know? Sure. So I, I meet him at, he tells me to come next week to his uh, drawing class. I go there and he makes me wait the entire time. I got my portfolio there. <laughs> he, he's like going to every student and uh, finally he goes, okay. He goes, what do you want to show me? So I take out the first painting and he goes, wait a minute. He goes, are you a teacher here? <laughs> I said, no, I'm a student. He goes, let me see more. He stops the class. He goes, everyone come over here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm taking out the paintings, and some are paintings that I did professionally and everything. And it was in my second year, the second year of, uh, of at School of Visual Arts. And he, he's like, okay, everyone, see, this is a student here. He's not a teacher. Wow. This is the kind of work he's producing. Wow. You know, it should teach you something, blah, blah, blah. So That's that, fantastic. It was a really interesting thing. So the next week, he, he invites me to the painting class wow. <laughs> where I wanted to go in. Anyway. Yeah, right. Wow. So I come in, and I'm thinking I'm going to just, you know, like sit in in his class he comes over to me and goes, Frederick, uh, come here. I want to talk to you. And I said, yeah. He goes, uh, he goes uh, I'd like to propose something to you. I said, what? He goes, uh, I would like to, uh, to see if you would be my, uh, my paid apprentice. I said, really? I said, well, you know, I got to think about it. <laughs> I swear to God, you know, because I was doing sure. schoolwork, right? right? I had all kinds of schoolwork, homework. Then I was illustrating professionally. And now this guy wants me to put time into doing underpaintings right. for him, you know? And so, um, you know, I thought about it and, you know, I, I talked to some people about it and they go, hey, it would be a great experience and plus he's going to pay you. Sure. So I did it. Incredibly validating yeah. for the kid, you know, something you saw on TV Guide and Time Magazine. You, yep. Two seconds in, you're, uh, you're as a practice. I, I have a funny story about TV Guide. I, I wound up doing, he, he, he had too, so much work, right? right. And he says, listen, this, this Columbus thing, right? And it's a cover. And he goes, I need you to work on it. So I, basically, I started from the drawing stages to the filling in stages to wow. almost finished. Wow. So he basically gave it to him and, you know, he finished it off and everything. And it won a prize in the, in the Society of Illustrators. Did he put his name on it? Of course. It was his name. 
kidding, man. Well, that you know what? Back in the, back in the Renaissance and, and the Baroque period, they had studios. You know right. what I mean? And they you know they had studio assistants working on it, and some of the, ma the ma masters would finish the paintings, and so um, and they and the masters would sometimes sign it or or not, but you right. know it would be that quality, a master, right, right. master's quality. But uh, I remember that day, my cousin was with me at the you know at the Society of Illustrators. And he kept avoiding me. <laughs> yeah, sure. I don't know if you'll remember this, but you know, it, uh, you, my, my you, cousin certainly. Do you remember it. the uh, the issue? Do you remember what the, the? Would you even remember what TV guide that was? Yeah, I actually have. I have a copy of it. All right. Well, so yeah, I, yeah. we're definitely going to take a look at that because that's <laughs> great. So, all right. So, one last question on the sure. on, on some of this craft before we move into your your other career that yeah. people remember a little differently. Um, but we we talked about. That it changed. Yes, that it the did. way you did things changed. As Absolutely. you work now, what's your process now? Well, um, as you learn more about other techniques and other artists, and uh, you have to kind of zero in on what works for you. Uh, the the illustrative stuff, you know, uh, was was too technical. It was too, you know what I mean? Drawing, you know, getting a tight drawing underneath, painting. Mm. So I'm more. I, I'm more attracted to the organic way of painting, you know, right. which is life from painting from life. Right. If you look over there, there's a uh, there's a skull, right? That's yeah, sitting right. there. Mm -hmm. If you look behind it, there's a little drawing of the skull with with those elements in it. Okay. And that's a brush drawing, basically. You light it, you know, you, you pick out all the shadows, and you're drawing uh, basically with uh, with a wash of of, of oil paint. And you'll see that I either work on canvas, like this painting, or, or panel, panel painting. I, with panel painting, I love doing small What's, work. Explain what panel painting panel, is. Uh, it, basically, it's, it's working on a wood panel. Okay. And a lot of the, um, the early Renaissance, uh, you know, Northern Italian and Dutch painters uh, uh, used to work on panel. Even the 17th century Dutch artists m preferred to work on panel because they did small easel paintings. Is the... Uh, is the Material, the paint material, you different than what you would use on canvas, or is it the same? No, same no it's thing. the same. Okay, uh, basically, the preparation is the same. You know, uh, you you have your your uh, your support, which is either canvas or wood, and sometimes copper, like that painting right there. That's copper. Yeah, yeah, that's a piece of copper. That's uh, that's wow. That was done right around 1600 by a painter by the name of Palma il Giovane, a Venetian painter that was very close to a very very important painter by the name of Titian, Tiziano, Tiziano Vercello. And so, um, where was I? I lost you were, you were, you, your process, you just sort of, the organic version yeah, as opposed yeah, to the yeah. technical so, version. So, um, you know, I'll set up a still life, um, you know, I'll start, you know, drawing with the brush and then I'll just go to town painting, mm. you know, looking at the colors, mixing the colors, trying to get them right as, as close as possible to what I see in life. Do you, um, do you, uh, do you decide on sizes that you work? Is there yes. A, okay. Yes, and you, we were actually we were talking about uh, panel panel you know, works, work, right. working on wood and you know small panel works. Uh, the reason they they used to work on that is because you could get really fine detail on a harder surface. Okay. When you're working on canvas, you'd have to really smooth the canvas out by putting a lot of gesso over it. What's that? What's uh, that? Gesso is a is a preparation. It's a barrier. Bef between the canvas or the wood okay. like and, a primer. The oil, and the oil paint, yeah. like a primer, okay. exactly. So you're not going directly okay. into the linen oh. or the canvas. Interesting. And so uh, then what I do is I, I, uh, I put so, sort of a, sometimes a warm wash or a cool wash, depending on how I feel about the painting and what I'm painting. And uh, then I just start the drawing and then start, start painting, you know. Right. And what, so what is, is, uh, what are you working on now that's turning you like turning you like you see you pointed this one out to me before that you've been working on you said I've been working long. on this painting for a while um, here's here's the reason are, why do you work on multiple pieces at the same time or do you just kind of stick with one thing I, I usually when I'm working on an exhibition yeah a I've bunch. got usually like three or four easels wow. going wow. you know and at different stages you know while something is drying I'll go and I'll start you know painting you know working wow. on something else um, this particular painting is of uh, an important art dealer in New York City. He's a contemporary, I'm, he's a contemporary person, but yeah. uh, he, uh, he mainly deals in, uh, in old masters. Mm. His name is Robert Simon, and he is the one who discovered the Leonardo da Vinci along with uh, Alexander Parrish. 
they, they both discovered this painting that was lost for I don't know how many years. Wow. And, uh, you know, make a long story short, it sold at Christie's a few years back for $450 million. Oh my God. It's the record for any work of art in wow. the world. Wow. Um, so, and, and this guy, he, he just sort of, that, his story just sort of inspired you to, to put him on camera? Well, no, we've, or, we've, um, or we've done a lot of business. We're, we're very, very friends. good friends. We've done a lot of business together. Uh, and we decided to, um, to barter. You know, that's okay. the great thing about art. About art <laughs> yeah, you could, right. yeah, you could barter. So uh, we've done it before. I've bartered for, uh, you know, another old master painting. And he's, he has a painting of, uh, of a mastiff that I did. You know, inspired by a, a painter by the name of Guaccino. And, uh, and now we're, we're bartering for something else. But the reason why this t painting has taken a long time is because as an artist, when you're working from life, it's the, it's, it's the ultimate uh, way to, for me, it's the ultimate way to paint. I'm working from photographs now back to what uh, I used to do right, years ago. Right, right, right. So right. It, the, the inspiration... I have to find it. Yeah, you know it's, what I mean? fl it's flattened. It's, fl it's exactly. flattened out. Yeah. But you take what you've learned over the years, uh, you know, in painting from life, and you try to bring it to, to you know, and that's right. what I'm doing with this painting. That's it's interesting taking... to, to go from what you started out with in, in this sort of non-dimensional illust uh, illustrative thing from photographs to an organic living in life, and now you can combine those two things. Exactly. That's, that's kind of an interesting... It's a, you know, there's a correlation I make uh, between... Uh, you know, what I just said, you know, taking what you've learned and, you know, bringing it into like working from photographs, right. you know, what you learn from life, what right. you see in, in real life and bringing those attributes. And when you're working on a face, you know, uh, if you see that there's, you know, there's beard stubble or whatever, you know, in real life, what, what colors are those? It, right. You know, and so right. you bring that into it. If the, sh if you're, you know, you're limited to a two-dimensional photograph and what the photograph is giving you. Right. You have to have this kind of knowledge. Right. And I think that relates to, to acting as well. Absolutely. It absolutely does, which is a nice little move because yeah. now we'll go back to SVA because somewhere in SVA, <laughs> That's right. Federico, you take a turn. I did. And I what, did. how did we get into the performing arts and how did that happen for you? All right. There was a, there was a friend of mine. Uh, his name was uh, Anthony, Anthony Calder. He was Italian. They, you know, his grandfather shortened it. You know, of course he was called Italian. Their own, <laughs> That's you know, right. Yeah. Called it. So Anthony was a real, real good artist. I mean, he was a really. I mean, he was very innovative. I mean, he he drew things out of his mind, and and they were they were really cool things that he was doing. Uh, we were in a couple classes together, and we really hit it off as friends. And uh, I always knew that he was always going to, you know, like this theater class, you know, in, at SVA, and it was kind of always in the back of my mind, and like you know. One day, one day I'll get around to it. You know? <laughs> and so towards the end of, uh, I guess this was probably in my last year there, fourth year at uh, the School of Visual Arts. And I was already kind of very comfortable where I was in my career as a painter, as an illustrator, you know, making money and, you know, going to, scho going, going to school on scholarship. Um, I, um, I felt comfortable, and he, he comes in one day, he comes into class, and he goes, my next class, man, hey, Federico, uh, you know, you want to come and uh, check me out? I'm going to do a monologue. And, um, yeah, kind of, I'm really quite sure what the fuck a monologue is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at the time, you know, you know I said, what are you? He goes, I said, he goes, it's like a soliloquy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's even thing. better. Yeah, right? yeah, help, thanks for so, helping. <laughs> so here's this, this kid who... who, who you know, I call him a kid, but, you know, he was, I think he was older than me. <laughs> but um, here's this guy who I knew, I knew his personality the whole time, right? And he gets up, and I'm, I'm, I'm on the rafters there. I'm, I'm watching. I can't wait to see this guy work, right? And, uh, and all of a sudden, he, he's doing it. I think he was, uh, I'm pretty sure it was, uh, it was a scene from uh, Death of a Salesman, Biff. Okay. And I'm like, oh, shit. So I'm like, man, he just... This is completely, and he was so good. He was, he was completely the antithesis of who he's normally, right. yeah, who he is normally. Right. And it sparked something in me. I said, this is something I always had in the back of my mind. Rich Little. This is, <laughs> yeah, and Rich right. Little, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, was, I was saying, you know what? I, I really feel that this is an art form I need to explore. And, and that was it. I just said, you know, I put my mind to it. 
I left, when I left school, I, I sought out teachers. I sought out, uh, right. you know, some theater classes and right, teachers right, right. and stuff. So, the, so it's literally seeing someone you know right yes. in front of you right. turn into something else. And you'd never seen that before. And no. you're like, okay, I'm in. That I'm was, all in now. It was, yeah, because, you know, when you're watching TV or yeah. a film, we're seeing their character. We're seeing the character that they're playing. You never get a chance right. to see their real personalities. <laughs> and even when some people are, you know, even when they're on talk shows or something like that, they're a little relaxed, but still, they're, they're playing. It's, right. a, it's a, you know, you yeah. know what I mean? Well, so what's the first, you sought out uh, uh, some teachers. What's the first techniques well, you're looking at? What are the, where did you go and what did you learn? Okay. So I found a flyer one day <laughs> for a, a new theater class that was starting off in New Jersey. It was called Action Theater. Action Theater. Action Theater. All yeah. Right. So um, I called them up and they said, well, you know, we haven't started yet, but we're going to be starting next Saturday. We're going to be meeting on Saturdays. And so I had, I was already kind of, you know, uh, I, I took classes with them and I was studying with some other places in New York City, you know, just like, you know, just to get, to get your feet wet, to get it. And just this is, this is just sort of basic scene study type stuff, you know, like how to exactly. breathe and how to talk. Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, relaxation right. and all that stuff. Right. right? So uh, a friend of mine and I, uh, my a good good buddy of mine, uh, we went to grammar school together. You know, I talked to him about it. He said, you know, this is pretty cool. He goes, let's 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 go together. We went together. You know, and it was. Um, it was, I thought it was a really good experience because, you know, you were doing monologues, right. uh, doing sort of scene study and things like that. Did and you ever get to finally do anything at that point? Are you ever getting in a, any kind of a production yeah, they had, or shows? You know, they had sort of like showcases. an ending showcase, you know what I mean? Right. They had a showcase and, uh, you know, um, so I did some of that. But at the same time, even before that, what wound up happening is that I got to tell you this story because it it's, was my first experience in film or being on a film set. Okay. So I come home one day, you know, clicked on the news, and there was a woman that was interviewing. Uh, that, you know, she was in Long Island somewhere and, and interviewing a casting director. And it was a, it, the casting director was casting for... Uh, to a scene that was going to be taking place or scenes that were going to be taking place at the Vanderbilt Mansion. Okay. All right? And it was a film called Crocodile Dundee 2. <laughs> and so I, I caught the Crocodile Dundee 2 in the tail end of the guy being interviewed, but and I couldn't remember what the hell his name was, so I saw her name, and this is Joyce Shank, you know, blah, 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 yeah. and signing off. And I'm like, Joyce Shank, okay, so... I, uh, I wrote her name down, and the next day, I called NBC. Or, or, yeah, I think it was yeah. NBC News. So I said, uh, yeah, may I speak to uh, Joyce Shank? They're like, uh, you know, uh, who, who is this? I said, well, I'm an aspiring act actor. I, I saw the segment that she did yesterday. And he goes, uh, hold on, she's right here. He puts, puts Joyce Shank on the phone with me. <laughs> and so... I speak to her and I say, listen, you know, he did a great job with this interview yesterday. <laughs> Here's a kiss. <laughs> smooth. <It's> like, <laughs> smooth. So, Always I'm leave like, you, you know, I'm like, you, you got to compliment him. Absolutely. Like, you did a great job with that. But I, you know, I didn't catch the guy's name. She goes, well, well, why would you want his name? I said, well, I'm an inspiring actor. And, you know, I, I really, I saw that they're casting for, you know, for this, this movie to do some background stuff. She goes, oh, okay. His name is Ricardo Bertoni from Navarro Bertoni Casting. And I said, oh, wow. She goes, do uh, you want his, his number? I'm like, <laughs> wow. yeah. She goes, and here's his address. So I, I'm writing all this stuff down. So I found out that, um, that you, needed, you needed sort of like a headshot. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, you, <laughs> you, needed, you needed a few some, tools. You needed some lies on the resume. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, um, you know, I, I you know, found what a, a resume looked like from somebody that I knew at the time and and so I, I put together whatever I could, you know, uh, from high school or whatever I could, you know. Sure. And then, you know, made up a few things. <laughs> so I said, okay, this is my strategy. I'm going to go there and I'm going <laughs> to just walk in. <laughs> so now you're talking about, what is it, 1986, 87? Right. 
and there were no cell phones. So I went to the corner and I called him from the corner <laughs> and he picked up the phone. He's like, hello? <laughs> I hung up the phone. So I'm like, all right, he's there. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I, walk, I walk up, right? And the door is kind of like a jar and I'm looking in and I see this sort of railway kind of uh, office with a, a desk over here and, and he's right in the center all the way in the back. And there's pictures of every single actor that you could imagine. I mean, like, mm. made, I mean, like, thank you, or, yeah. you know, Ricardo, blah, 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 all this stuff. So he's writing something. He goes, yes, may I help you? And I, I said, uh, yes, I'm, you know, I'm here. A friend of mine sent me over. Uh, he's, like, he's like, a friend of you? Who's your friend? I said, uh, Joyce Shank. He goes, who's Joyce Shank? <laughs> yeah. And he goes... I said, well, she interviewed you the, yesterday or the day before. Uh, you remember? She, for the, oh, oh, very nice woman. Very nice. She sent you? I said, yeah, she sent me. So <laughs> what for? I said, well, she said I th she thought I would be good for the, uh, <laughs> for the you know, uh, the, the, the Crocodile Dundee film. He goes, you have a picture and a resume? <laughs> so I said, I said, yeah, yeah, I have one. So I give him my picture. He's looking, he's looking at the picture now. This headshot was ridiculous. Sure. I had... You know, like Keanu School lighting, <laughs> yeah, right. like dark on one side and like, <laughs> and this, this like, you know, layered hair, you right. know, he goes, very dramatic hair, uh, head <laughs> shot you have here. He turns it around and he goes, Federico Castelluccio, ma sei italiano? E perché oh. non mi hai detto che sei italiano? Vada a sapere, ah, hold on a second. He goes to the book, he goes, okay, you come, you work on Tuesday. <laughs> I go, man, was it that easy? I'm That's in my it. mind, I'm like, I said, Tuesday? You want me to come? He goes, Tuesday. You come in, 6 o'clock in the morning, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and then what happened was he, uh, I, you know, it was... Uh, it was, was it background work or did he give it you something to do? Work. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Crocodile Just... Sunday when they all go to the, to, the, to the place to save, you know... Oh, okay. Uh, you Shit, know. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a long... Anyway, there's tons of people. <laughs> You're right. So we're, we're on the set. It's raining, cold. Yeah. I mean, like, it was, it was like the worst possible day to be outside right. all day long. Yeah. And uh, I remember the, the director, or the assistant director, I guess it was, he said, okay, everybody, when you come in here, you're going to go, you're going to just make a turn around, you're going to be looking around, but don't look towards the camera. <laughs> so I'm, in my mind, I'm saying, well, if the camera's there, and I'm walking that way, they're going to see the back of my head. So I got to fucking turn around, man. <laughs> so of course, you see me, and I'm like the only one like, turning around, like, <laughs> getting, getting a little FaceTime. You That's know? nice. Well, you were smart, right? Well, you know what? The, the best part about that story is, and this is what people don't understand, and what I never learned, because that's why I'm still here where I am, is there's talent right, in, in, in our business. And there's a little sliver of super, super talent at the top, and a little sliver of super super bad at the bottom and most of its gradations in the middle of really good and you know but it's the tenacity and the the balls to do anything to do something to sleep on the floor that's what exactly that's what makes the so the idea of well shit i just saw the news program i'll just call the tv station <laughs> and i'll be in the movies it's, it's got to be that easy right it's, it's it was it literally was crazy that he said okay i'll put you in that's come amazing. in on tuesday so but you know yeah, yeah. no but but so but the the idea that that ignorance yeah right right the, the universe rewards this sort of courage of ignorance that you just dive right in and yeah and there you are and then you speak italian and that's it He's got yeah you. yeah but you know the interesting thing was that i was eating it all up i was on a film set sure you know and there was a lot of downtime too you yes know? and i got a chance to talk to some actors you know some you know some uh i think charles dutton i had a great conversation with charles wow. dutton charles he was S. in that dutton. scene yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, he was really cool, cool guy, man. That's very cool. And, uh, and, and I was just observing, observ observing a lot. But it was, the, the, the day itself was one of the coldest, rainiest yeah, days. Yeah. It was, it was like horrible. But the excitement of being there was, it was kind of balancing itself that says, off. That's, uh, that says it all. That says so what, it. What, what happens? Ricardo Bertoni comes to the set, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he comes to the set and he goes, So, Federico. How do you like acting? And I'm like, I love it. You know, in my <laughs> mind, I'm like, I hope it's not like this the whole time. Right, right, right. And he goes, you shouldn't waste your time doing this. He goes, I'll send you to someone, a coach. And he sends me to a coach by the name of Donald Buca. And that's when I really started seriously studying the craft. Now you're studying 
seriously. Now I'm studying seriously. Because what is the what? What Ricardo Bertoni told me that day. He says you're a leading man, <laughs> but you you got to go study with someone who will understand who you are. He said that to me. And I said, leading man? I'm like, I never thought of myself as a leading <laughs> man. I, I, I just want to work as an actor, you right, know? Right, right. You know, and he, so he, uh, he sent me to, uh, to study with him. And then um, I got into, uh, okay, where, where am I? Okay, oh, I don't know if I finished. Oh, no, I didn't finish this story yet. So Carver Tony comes to it. So what happens? Next day, I, so I, I basically saw the lay of the land. They saw my face. They saw sure. that I was one of the extras. I go back there the next day. I meet, uh, who's the actor, the, the main actor's name? Oh, Paul really? Hogan. Paul Hogan, right. I meet Paul Hogan and, you know, say hello to him and everything. And then I meet his assistant, you know, this big burly guy. And I said, uh, I, I got, I exchanged numbers with the assistant. I said, listen, you know, I'm an artist. I said, um, I'd love to do a portrait of, of uh, you know. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> Smooth again. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, he says, really, you're an artist? I said, yeah. And I, you know, I showed him a couple pictures that I had with me of my work. He goes, he goes oh, wow, this, you're a serious artist. <laughs> I said, ah. So I wound up doing this, this drawing, and I present it to, to him, to uh, Paul Hogan. And there's a picture of us with me in this long, like, leather trench coat. <laughs> I think it's online, actually. And it's, it's me and him holding this, this wow. picture that I did, and I gave him. And he, uh, he was, I remember there was something in, in, he was interviewed in TV Guide magazine. And uh, I remember my, my art teacher at the time, because they always followed my career in art. They said they found it in, in there, and it said that it was one of the best portraits that was ever done of him. Oh, so it was cool. You that's know, it was very cool, cool. That, to get that back. Yeah. You know? And... Uh, Ricardo Bertoni saw that I had met him, had pictures with him, and, you know, because I went back to him, and he goes, how, how did you meet him? I'm like, I went back, you know, I met him, and, then, and, he, and so he saw that, yeah. you know, I had Ambition. something, yeah, like, you extra. know, whatever it was, you know, going to get, you know, like, right. not just sitting back, Right. and he, uh, he gave me a script, he goes, if you could find financing for the script, you'll be a producer and you have a part in it, and it was a, 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 a film called Tarnished Feathers, I remember it to this day. Wow. I never got the financing for it. But yeah, <laughs> that's, was a kid, that's another story. But that's that's the lesson: is the is the ambition and the 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 tenacity, the tenacity of it yep. just led you. So he sends you to a coach, and you start studying the craft. What's the what do you? Was there a particular technique he was doing? Was he doing method yeah. Meisner type stuff? No, or what um, do you remember no, what it was? It was mainly uh, monologues with yeah. him, obviously, because. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't doing scenes. It was right. just me. So we were working on monologues. We were working on some Shakespeare. Okay. Um, had you ever done that before? Oh, yeah. You? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. I, had, I had done... Um, it was with a... Uh, it was an independent theater company in Manhattan. And uh, we, we did it in the round. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, okay, so we... I'm trying to, trying to think back... You know, time wise. Yeah, which, things, which was things which. crisscross in yeah, my they, mind. They kind of yeah. crisscross. Yeah. Um, but I had already been working, had been studying with other people. Right, um, right around that time, I, I started studying with a great teacher by the name of Molly McCarthy. And Molly was, was an actress in her earlier years. She was an ingenue. She, uh, she was also later on in life, was, was an agent for writers and artists. Okay. And I remember, uh, you know, uh, Matt Dillon, uh, I went to school with pa Paul Dillon, was an artist. Paul was Matt Dillon's okay. older brother. And, you know, Paul had, had uh, referred me. He goes, you know, you should think about studying with this teacher. And her, her name is uh, Molly McCarthy. I said, so that's the first time I heard her name. And it turns out, you know, she, she had, you know, Kevin Dillon, she coached Matt Dillon, uh, Heather Graham, like all these like yeah. names that we know now right, right. came from, from her, her, like, her class. So, um, I, um, I, I, I went to an audition, uh, this was for the Columbia Pictures thing, and I, I just, just didn't, I just didn't have it, you know, I just wasn't ready, you know, I went to this audition, the casting director saw that I had something, but right. just wasn't right for that right. role or whatever, she goes, you know, I'm, I'm going to recommend a teacher for you, her name is Molly McCarthy. Right. I said, Molly McCarthy, I, you know. That's the third time yeah, I've heard yeah. this name, yeah. You know, she goes, uh, you know, she's not expensive. She charges $10 a class. I'm like, 
<laughs> what? Ten dollars? Must be. I mean, like, it can't be good if like just charge. Yeah. <laughs> you know. So it turns out she gives me her name. I said I said I was referred by then. I knew you know Paul Dillon, Matt's brother, yeah. blah, blah blah. So she says, sure, come on in. Just you know, just uh, audit the class. You know, come in, sit down. You know, just watch. So I go to this class, and. I see these two people talking. They were up front, you know, and then the rest of the people were kind of quiet, you know. And I walk in a little tiny bit late, so I'm, I'm trying to be quiet because everybody else is. So these guys are talking. I'm thinking they're having a conversation about, you know, b before they're starting to do the acting. <laughs> and <laughs> they're like, scene. I'm like, wait a minute, that was a fucking scene? <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. That was, it was conversational. It was, it was Meisner. Okay. It was my. Nice. All right. It was it was moment to moment. Right. Conversational, imaginary circumstances being real to them, it became real to me. I said, "This is what I need to know." Right. Right. And that's what I was studying at the that's time. That's fantastic. So right away, you're 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 doing Meisner, and that was it. I did. Oh, I did study some some method. I did yeah. study some method. I studied. I I kept hearing about method. I was right. Like, what the. Because what is method? I, I don't, you know, I don't understand. Everybody's talking about method, method. So I find a teacher. His name was Charlie Lawton. Uh, Not the Charles Lawton. No, you know, no, this from is the 1940s. that's uh, that's uh, Al Pacino's buddy, isn't that's it? That's Al Pacino's teacher. Yeah, that's Al right. Pacino's teacher, Charlie Lawton. Yeah. Right uh, from the actor's studio. Right. So I go there and I start, you know, I start working with them. I start working with, you know, he was he uh, he he was an interesting guy. He had MS. <laughs> you know Charlie? Yeah, I don't know him, but I oh, know okay. of him. Yeah. yeah. So I um, started studying with him, and basically, you know, we were we were doing kind of sense memory things. Yes, yeah, uh, that's the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, substitution, all right. kinds of stuff that I'm saying. Right. You know, it, it's it's interesting, but when the fuck am I ever going to use this? I mean, right. when am I ever right. going to use this stuff? Right. So, cut to many years later. Sure. I'm doing a view from the bridge. I'm playing Marco in a view from the of bridge. Of course you are. That's it's, a perfect role for you. <laughs> It's, it's, it was a regional production. Right. It was at the Lauren K. Woods Theater. I uh, did that one too a while ago. I played Alfieri. Uh, Alfieri. Oh, cool. <laughs> I can see you Alf yeah. Alfieri. Um, so I'm doing this, this thing, and, you know, my character has to have two sons. They're back in Italy. Right. And I, I didn't have any children, at least as far as I knew, I didn't have any children at the time. You know? yeah, right. <laughs> I, I did have nephews, though. Okay. I, had, I had two nephews at the time. And so. You know, I couldn't get to where I needed to get in this scene, talking about my my son that had right. you know the imagination wasn't strong enough, right. and I needed something. Right. So, I I said maybe you know what I learned in Charlie's class yeah. could is where me. the sense memory comes exactly. in. Exactly, yeah. sense memory and also substitution. Substitution, sure. Substituted my nephew's picture of them mm. every time I took it out. I can't even say it right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. fucking start, you know. Yeah. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's right? all it's, in the nerves, man. It's still man. there yeah, after I don't absolutely. know how many years. That's what, that's the the value of yeah. that tool. Yeah, absolutely. Well, man. I had the same. I had similar things because I I learned all those different things too. I eventually settled more on sort of Mamet's practical aesthetics kind of version. I'm a little more uh, uh, less dime store psychology, <laughs> more 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 yeah. practical nuts and bolts stuff. But I did learn all that stuff, and I found that the sense memory stuff and the method stuff was real good for film. It is. Where there's no it continuity, is. right? Where it's right. like That's I don't true. have a, a whole scene to get through. It's like, all right, today we're shooting the part where you they shot your brother and go, and you and there's no nothing leading to it, and you have to access something <laughs> quickly. Isn't that something? And you're like, boom, and it's there, and people don't realize what that does to That's your it. nervous system. It's locked in. You're there. absolutely right. It goes back to what I was saying about painting, the things that you learned early yeah. on. Right. You bring it to what you're working on now, if you need it, if it's necessary. Right. Those are implements that you can, you have. They're all tools. At your man. fingertips. Yeah. And um, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. So when do you? So let's let's move on a little bit. When do you? When, you're you're a young actor. You're learning the craft. You're learning all these sure. different tools. When do you start working? Where you're going? Okay, now I'm I'm getting okay. gigs, man. I'm I'm working a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I never. It's, this is very interesting. I'm glad you brought this up because I never considered myself an actor uh, <laughs> until, no, under, honestly, honestly, because, you know, I was, uh, I was a painter. Everybody right. around me knew me as a painter, right. you know. The one time I mentioned it to someone, I, I was either in my family or one of my friends, uh, I said, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, I'm, I'm going to be doing some acting, you know, they're like, 
you've given up painting? And I'm like, no, no, no. I'm just going to add that to my life. Right. You know, just make it even more hard, uh, even <laughs> more difficult. Anyway, so um, I started, um, I, 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 I always had this kind of on my paint box, right? You know, you open up your paint box and your paints are in there. In this little room that I used to have, um, I had a sign up there. I had what the mind can conceive and believe it can achieve. Mm. And it said, state your goal okay. to be a working actor. That's it, you know? And so I was, it, was, it was a very humble kind of like, you know, thing. I just wanted to be a working actor right. while, I was, while I was painting the right. whole time. So I, I saw that it threatened some friends and family you know, the fact that they thought I was going to oh, be giving up painting, sure, you know, because right. they know me, you know, all this time as a painter. I just never mentioned it. <laughs> and so I realized that I couldn't mention that in the acting world as well, because then they'll think, God, oh, this guy's half ass. He wants to do everything. Right. But they were two disciplines, right. you know, and a lot of people don't have, they, they, they don't realize that, you know, a discipline is a discipline. Yes. You have to put a lot of time right. and work into it. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, as far as, how I started, I started in theater. I started on stage. Okay. Started, you know, and, I, and, and this goes back to also what I was talking about before. When you, when you have to do what you just said, you know, you have to start from, like, yeah. you know, like shooting out of sequence in film. When you're doing theater, you're rehearsing for about six to eight weeks. Yes. You know, you're doing blocking. You know, you're, you're memorizing things because of blocking and where you are. And, you know, uh... So it's, it's that rehearsal process that we don't have luxury of as film As film is, right, yeah. So you take that memory, that muscle memory, and you take what, that knowledge that you have, and you bring it into that short amount of time right. that you have to do right. on screen. Right. And so all of, those, all of those moments that you find, even when you're working as, as an actor on stage, right. you, you kind of think about it and bring them to... Uh, sort of bring them to to what you're doing as as an actor in in theater and, and yeah well, it's, I mean in film and television yeah because you're what what you learn after doing it long enough especially like you and I both started in the theater you it's a time management thing you become you you can condense your tools to fit the you you play the room you right know, the, you play the room you're in and the room you're in is I got two minutes to pull off this thing as opposed to an hour and a half with six weeks of rehearsal. Exactly. And you, but you know you, can, you have a facility to how to do that once you've been doing it long enough. And I think exactly. it's, it's so much more valuable. This is why New York people are always great. Is We almost always start in the theater. That's here. true. And it's a theater it's, coast. It's hard to go yeah. the other way. It is. It's a lot it harder is. to go the other way. I've seen I've seen some you know film actors that went into theater and it just it didn't have the the gravitas that they yeah. do on screen. Interestingly enough, yeah. And you know some of them kind of relied on their fame to get them. You know what I mean to to make them right. great on stage, but right. that doesn't really. And what the, what they're missing is it's a it's an audience participation sport. So right. There's the that's the other character in the in the piece. You know, so there's a there's that energy that you have to give them, mm -hmm. and if you're used to giving it in a box, yes, that's true. Tight, it's it's so, it's it's so much easier to go this way than this way. Mm -hmm. um, but that's great. I, I didn't know how much. So how long were you in the theater? Like what what was your theater oh, career like? God, I was uh, I was with a couple of um, I did regional theater. You know, Shakespeare festivals. Um, what was some of your favorite stuff that you got to? Because we never get to play those roles yeah, unless we're in the theater. So. I know. Uh, I, I did uh, Good Night Desdemona, Good Morning Juliet. I played <laughs> Tybalt in that, uh, which was a great, I, I love that play. It's just so bizarre and out there. Uh, Romeo and Juliet, um, uh, Twelfth Night. Oh, right. Uh, yeah, I played different characters in Twelfth Night, I remember. That was also in the round. Then, of course, we did you know, contemporary plays. Sure. Uh, Savage in Limbo. Uh, I played Merck, the owner of the bar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and the, oh, that's interesting because when I did that, that was a really good production too. It was it was also set in an actual bar, right? Where the audience was was there, you know, right. at the tables. Right, stuff. right. Wow. Oh, wow. That's yeah, good. yeah. Almost like really, dinner theater. It was. Cool. It was <laughs> like dinner theater. Yeah. Uh, but it was really it was really well done. I remember. Mm -hmm. And one night. Um, a teacher, uh, a very well-known teacher by the name of uh, Suzanne, Suzanne Shepard came in. And, uh, 
you know, we, you know, everyone had heard about Susan, Suzanne Shepard and, you know, her classes. They were really, you know, everybody was, it was a buzz, you know. And she came to see us because one of her, one of, one of the people working in, in the play was in her class. And she came up, up to me uh, at the very end. She goes, I don't know who you are. I've never seen your work before. But I have to tell you, I saw this on Broadway and you're better than the guy who played it on Broadway. <laughs> I said, what? Are you kidding me? See, I mean, that was like a tremendous, I mean, like, you know, when you, you don't, you can't gauge what the hell you're doing. You know, no. you just do your work. Exactly. And when you have someone like that that's revered. And exactly. Then she goes, I want you to come. I want you to sit next to me and just watch some of these people work. I, and I did that. I was. I thought it was. She I'll was tell you, you got teacher. you got a little angel on your shoulder, if I remember. It was. It was. I've, a really I've been listening to this story for an hour now, and every time it's like. And then I just kind of walked in, <laughs> and they said, "Come on over here," and I was like, "Yeah, hey, whatever." Well, it, was, it was actually that play that I got my first agent. Okay. And um, all right, here we go. Bob Barry. <laughs> okay, so it was a, there was a scout that came to it. It was. Uh, I forget her name, but she was she was very interesting. She came over to me at the end. She said. Uh, she said, Federico, um, she goes, I love what you did. Uh, she said, uh, um, I'm, bringing, I'm bringing Bob Barry here from Barry Half Brown tomorrow. And she goes, I really would love for him to take a look at your work. I said, oh, that's great. So the next day after the thing, Bob came over and he goes, uh, he had this really raspy voice. <laughs> Hi, Federico, I love you. I love uh, what you did. And he was a really small guy that smoked fucking chain smoking. And uh, he's like, ah. He goes, do you have representation? I'm like, I said, no, no, I, I don't. He goes, I'd love to start sending you out. You know? That's fantastic. And started sending me out, and I started booking things right away. That's great. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move ahead because I have limited sure, time with you, and I don't want to eat up all of your please, afternoon please. here. But uh, let's move right to, uh, to uh, your big thing. Let's go right to into, sure. I'm sure you did a lot of uh, other uh, film and stuff work, but I want to get through about, Sopranos yeah. and then get into you as a director. So sure. how does the Sopranos come into your life? How do they find you? How do you find them? Okay. What's that experience uh, like in the beginning? And I, had, I, well, I had been working as an actor, you know, just kind of bouncing around, doing whatever you get, can get, you yeah. know, uh, soap operas, uh, you know. What soap any, operas did you do? I did uh, The Guiding Light, <laughs> right. did As the World Turns. Yep. I did a bunch of them. We all did, they, they, yeah, when yeah. they were in New York, they're I not mean, there anymore. You, yeah. it, was, it was a learning experience. And I'm telling you, I, let me just quick, yeah, quick go, tiny please, little go story. I did one thing where I was playing a, a guard, you know, uh, you know with, with another actor. And I wasn't used to, you know, them changing the friggin' lines that morning. They right, came in with right. a new script. I had worked on all the script. And for whatever reason, I just couldn't get this one line in my head. And you, have, you only have three takes in that. Mm. And I fucked it up all the way through. Wow. And that was the very last thing I did. Yeah, that's it. That's my exit of my soap opera career. Wow. But, which was a blessing in disguise. Sure, you know what I mean? Or else I probably would have went down that <laughs> yeah, right. Nothing against, you know. Yeah, hey, you know. soap operas, <laughs> let me tell you, that's hard. It's, you get a script like this, training, those people, the training those people those work people their ass have, off, man. Are, it's meritorious, and I'll tell you. And what they have to make work that should not have any business being made to work. You're absolutely Make right. Make it truthful. You're absolutely it's right. really I, incredible. I, you know, I take my hat off to all those people, now, all those actors. Absolutely. You know? um, so I had been bouncing around for like 10, 12 years. And uh, a girlfriend I had met at the time uh, was, was a model transitioning into being an actor. And she, she would get backstage. And she calls me up one day. Which is an says, acting magazine. An they, acting they, magazine. They don't have right. it. I don't even know if it's a paper anymore. I don't even, yeah, I don't I'm I know it's sure. online now. Yeah, back then it was paper. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Back then it was a paper. So she calls me up and she was kind of part-time at a restaurant, you know, like maitre d' and stuff. And she goes, uh, there's, there's something in here. When you come by, I want to show you because I think you'd be good for it. So I go over there and like so many other people, when she says Sopranos, I'm thinking, oh, shit. Well, I don't sing. It's probably some kind of... She goes, no, read it. And I read right. the breakdown, and I see they got James Gandolfini. Hardly anybody knew who he was. I was a nerd and knew who the hell he was right. at the time. And I'm like, this guy's a great actor. And then Michael Imperioli. We knew each other from the theater circuit. I'm like, wow. they got Michael in this. Wow, that's cool. And so then, you know, uh, Dominic Canese, Johnny Ola. I'm like, wow, this must be a great thing. So... I see the pilot episode on HBO, and I was like so blown away. I was like, "Oh my God, I've never seen anything like this on TV." Nobody had. And I, I like, I called Bob Barry. He was my agent still. Yeah. <laughs> I said, "Bob," I said, "There's this film." He goes, "He goes, yeah, yeah." He goes, uh, "No problem. We sent your stuff in already." 
Wow. I said, okay. So I get a call. He goes, I'm, I'm faxing you. You had an audition. I'm faxing you something. I said, I don't want to do like a day player. He goes, well, this may have a couple of episodes. <laughs> so I said, okay. I read it. And I'm like, what the hell is this? I was 34, 30, at, around 34 at the time. Right. And I had long hair, you know. Right. And I'm reading it. And this is like a John Gotti type. I right. said, I'm not right for this. He said, Bob, what the hell? He goes, well, I sent your picture in. They saw your resume. They want you. They want to read you. Go there. I do the audition. I felt I nailed it. Call back. Then after that, nothing. All right. So I knew I was. I wasn't excited or you know upset. I should right. say. Um, and I said, okay, Bob, listen to me. This is a. This is something that I can't. I really feel I have something to offer. I grew up in New Jersey. I grew up around these these characters. Yeah, absolutely. I know them kind of intimately, and um, I really feel I have something to give here. So he says, he goes, all right. He goes, and, and I said, please, I don't want to do any day players, no under fives, no nothing. It's got to be a little bit of a character arc, two, three episodes. <laughs> he says, okay. Finally, about eight months down the road, he sends me, he, he goes, I'm going to send you something. I think you're right for it. So... I, he goes, uh, I'll fax it to you. <laughs> Back then, it was, it was all faxes. faxes. Yeah, right. I come home and I see all these papers on the floor and I pick them up and it, and it was slated as Furio, no last name, Tony Soprano's cousin from Italy. Oh, like, oh shit. There we go. And then the, the um, it, it said that, uh, you know, the, cri the criteria yeah. for the character was that you had to be able to speak Italian fluently. And also to uh, to have a very convincing Italian accent, <laughs> and so I've been around the Italian accent my whole life, right? Pretty much, and uh, you know I've been speaking Italian in the home, and 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 what I remember was after that first episode and and in watching the season was that they were from Naples, they were from near Naples, Avellino. Okay, right. And so right. they spoke with the same accent right. that I, you know, where I was from, where I was right. born, and so. Uh, when I auditioned for it, uh, you know, it, this is a very interesting thing because I had uh, I had a lot of friends that were already on it. Sure. Several friends, I should say. Not a lot, but several. Michael Imperioli, uh, uh, Vinny Pastor. Yeah, Vinny. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, uh, and Aida Torturo. I knew Aida okay. very well. Yeah. Great actor. So I call Aida up and I say, Aida, I, I said, uh, you know, I, I got an audition. They... they you know, I got a call back and for this, this role, it's a really good role. And um, they want me to read for producers. So, but I said to her, I go, you know, there, there's something that's missing in this. She goes, what are you talking about? <laughs> I said, well, I said, there's this, um, there's this Italianismo that is missing. There's this like, I, I feel that there's, it, it's really incredibly well written, but there's this attempt. You know, I think there needs to be something. She goes, Federico, don't do it. Yeah, don't fuck up here. <laughs> don't. Fuck. She goes, you know, I went, I auditioned for that room. It was the coldest room I ever auditioned for. And she had been working as an actor for years. For her to say that, yeah. I'm like, really? She goes, yeah. She goes, and, and they don't want you to ad lib. They don't want you to do anything. Their words are their words. It's golden. They don't want to. I said, okay, all right. So, and she goes, please, don't do it. <laughs> So I, I go to this audition, right? I start the audition, and all these people are in the room, like you know, producers, the director introduced himself. Is Chase there? Is David Chase? Tim Tim Van Patten. Oh. I didn't know who Chase was at the time. Oh, so right. Yeah. He was, you know, I'm sure he was there. Probably was. Right. So he was sitting on the couch. <laughs> he <laughs> was there, <laughs> and so um, he. Uh, I, I start the audition. And then I mimicked the fighting and I mimicked all of this stuff, right? And I could see that the, first they were like this, you know, in there, you know, just like, all right, let's see what this guy's going to do. And then all of a sudden I felt the room change. I felt people were sitting up like, you know, really, you know, you just kind of feel, mm -hmm. you feel yeah. when things are going kind of going well, you know? And so I felt confident enough to do that Italian at okay. the end. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I, I did the Italian at the end. I did this this ad lib in Italian, and I spit, and I, you know, the, all of a sudden, uh, then I, you know, that was the scene, and I'm looking at everybody, and I'm like, okay, let me grab my bag. And go. <laughs> so they're like, oh, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, Federico, where, where are you going? And it was somebody on the couch, and I was like, uh, I was just gonna, 
He goes, Federico, let me ask you something. Uh, where are you from? I said, where am I from? Uh, well, are you talking about where I live now or where? He goes, everything. I said, well, I was born in Naples, Italy, and, and I grew up in, in New Jersey, in Patterson, New Jersey. <laughs> and I see, he goes, okay, I, thank you. Yeah. And he had this grin sure. on his face. And that was David Chase. Wow, that's fantastic. So now, I'm waiting two and a half weeks. Two, two, a week goes by, nothing. Calling my, my, my agent. I said, Bob, what's going on? He goes, he goes, I don't know. He goes, I haven't heard anything. Two weeks go by. I said, Bob, I said, I, I know I nailed that audition. I said, what the hell's going on? I said, this had to have been one of the best auditions I've had in my entire career, blah, blah, blah. I'm going on and on. And he goes, he goes, listen, I don't know. It's still in the breakdowns. Wow. I said, really? It hasn't been cast wow. yet? He goes, no, it hasn't been cast yet. So it turns out another maybe three or four days after that, uh, I get a call from Bob saying, they, they, uh, they want you to read. They want you to come back and read. I said, another time? I said, I already did two auditions. <laughs> they go, they want you to read with James Gandolfini. Wow. I go, oh, oh, okay, all right. All right. So I go there to the final, final audition. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm outside, and they, they gave me a new, this, this is a revised script. So I'm like, saying, revised script. I'm like, I hope there's no... So I'm reading through it. Everything was pretty much the same until I get to the very end. <laughs> Ad-libbed in Italian <laughs> was that, my line. That's great. Because you know why? At the end, before I was about to leave again, I forgot to tell you this, somebody else comes up to me and he goes, Federico, uh, hi, uh, I'm one of the writers. I, you know, uh, my name's Terry Winter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I said, okay. He goes, uh, he goes, what did you say at the end? He wanted to know what you said. Yeah. yeah, he goes, what did you say at the end there in Italian? I said, um, well, I said, you're lucky I didn't kill you, you fucking whore. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes like this. He goes, okay. <laughs> so now, the whole time that, I'm, that they haven't called me back, right. I'm thinking of what Aida told me. She says, don't, don't do say it. Right, right. And I told her, I said, I completely fucked this up, man. Yeah. And, and I said, I shouldn't have done it. Yeah. I should have listened to her. <laughs> That's great. And so, uh, you know, it wasn't that at all, actually. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. said, I'm like, holy shit, I, I said that. I, and I'm second guessing it. Was it in the script? No, no. I said I'm you the one said who said it, that. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway. So you get to meet you. You now you're walking into what to so now test I, with James Gandolfini. So now, it? yeah, I'm, I'm outside and I hear what's going on. Blah blah blah. I hear Vinnie Pastore's voice. I'm like, what's this? So, and then James Gandolfini and they walked. They didn't even see me. They I was off to the side and. They walked right past me and they went into the room. Right. So yeah, a couple minutes after that, um, you know, they called me in. Now there's like twice as many people in there. All the producers, you know, Vinnie Pastor sitting in the back, <laughs> and James Gandolfini. Is, you know, said, how's, "How's it going?" So they, we started the audition. Went just like you know, you don't want to change anything. So right. it went incredibly well. And then uh, so one of the producers, somebody came over to me and gave me another script. Mm. He gave me uh, another scene. And they said, uh, Federico, would you mind doing this scene? And it said, on the top of it, it said, Naples, Italy. It said, and all of, this, all this stuff had to have been done in Italian. Yeah. So there was some stuff in English with the Italian right. accent. So I said, would you mind if I had a few minutes to go? Take your time. It just took like five, five, six, seven minutes. I read it over a couple times, made some choices, went inside. We did it. And that was it. That was it, man. That's I got, so fantastic. You, you know how I, got the, how I found out? Because... No. I, now, I'm thinking they're going to tell me you got the job, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm finished, right? So I'm like looking at them, and they're like, thank you. I'm like, fucking thank Son you again? Son of a bitch! I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, thank you? Are you, ki are you kidding me? Yeah. All right, so I, I grab my stuff, and I'm about to leave, and then Georgia Ann Walken, who was working the camera, she goes, Federico, it was a Friday night. Mm -hmm. She goes, go home, have a beer. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll get back to you soon. You know, have a good weekend. I'm like, all right, thank you. This whole weekend, I'm like saying, I don't know, man. Th thank you. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, how, what is this business about? Right. It's like you do the best you possibly can. You feel the room change. You feel, and and I'm thinking, it's not going to happen. I have a client here in my studio. Mm -hmm. The next uh, that Monday morning, and I, I get a call and I said, Can you excuse me a second, and I didn't recognize the number. So I pick it up. Hello, it's like uh, Federico. I said, yeah. He goes, uh, is your, what's, what's your? Could you give us your neck size and you know the sleeve and <laughs> like? I, I said, who is this? They go, 
It's wardrobe. I said, wardrobe? From where? He goes, from Sopranos. Sopr I, Sopranos? I said, did I get the job? She goes, nobody told you? <laughs> That's crazy. That's amazing. Yeah, so I found out from the wardrobe. The wardrobe <laughs> department. <laughs> and oh, I, I was wow. like, I was over the moon, man. Of I was course. Like, well, it's a, shit, man. Now, this, this is, is a huge, this is a, you know at this point, everybody yeah, knows it's a, it's it a beginning but, of the second season. Yeah, and it's a landmark show. Everybody knows it. it the antihero that changed, the, you know, the whole landscape of how television works. So you have a sense of that right off the bat. So now, working on it, I, I, I don't want to spend too much time here, sure. but working on it as an actor with these other actors at this level. Uh, Edie Falco, who's in a great Long Islander. We love Edie back on it was Long crazy. Island. crazy. Uh, and obviously Jimmy Gandolfini and all these guys mixing all these different styles. What was it like bringing your stuff to that? All this stuff you'd now learned and okay. craft-wise, what's it like working with these people? Uh, the very first, very first read-through, mm -hmm. I came in. Um, I was sitting around the table and, you know, everybody was kind of, you know, coming in a little late and sitting down, everybody's getting ready, you know, and I'm, I'm kind of looking around and I, I see, you know, uh, Nancy Marchand, who I've been looking <laughs> at, is like, Johnny Ola. Right, yeah, <laughs> right, from Canese, The Godfather. <laughs> Dominic Canese, and then uh, I see Gandolfini, I see David Chase now, I know who he is, and uh, I'm looking at all these people and I started freaking out in my head. Mm. I started, my heart started like pounding and literally I was like, I can't even... Like an out-of-body experience? It was almost like, yeah, I was looking down right. at the entire scene and I was like saying to myself, what the fuck am I doing here? I, I mean, I, 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 you know, it was like I started literally to, to freak out. Wow. It, you know, my heart was fucking pounding. Right. And all of a sudden, you know, they, they said, okay, you know, you know, announce your character, your name and your character name. And the thing was going around and around and around. And all of a sudden, I'm like, Federico Castelluccio, Furio Junta. <laughs> and it was, With the that accent. was all I needed to do it, with the accent. That's great. And so people that didn't know me thought I really spoke like that. Because <laughs> that's all they heard. That's great. And uh, the next day, uh, I, I guess I was shooting the next day or the day after. And I went on to the... <laughs> I went on to the trailer, the makeup trailer. I'm saying hello to everybody. Edie's there. She's getting her hair done. She's like, I said, hey, Edie, how are you? Nice, nice to see you again. And, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And saying hello. And she's like, what happened to your accent? That's, uh, <laughs> so I, I want to tell like, you a funny story. Yeah. That's, you know, when I was first going to work with you on that one picture, the, the thing where you, you gave me that scene, uh, somebody said, so what's his accent like? <laughs> I said he's from New Jersey. He's a, he's a regular dude, just like you know. But they all have that that exactly. impression of exactly, yeah. Julio yeah. Junta, you know, uh, from Naples. You know, that's amazing. Uh, that's I, so great. I worked really, really hard on that accent. I mean, sure. I had done other things prior to that on stage with with Italian accents and everything. But you know, I worked on every little word. Thought about how I, I went back to Twenty uh, First Avenue in Patterson, where hmm. there are a lot of uh, it, old Italian guys that go to the cafes oh, and stuff. Right. And, you know, I just sat down listening to how they spoke with the Itali Italian accent. Mm. And then I brought a recorder with me mm. uh, just to get the timber right, get the, the cadence right of certain things. I listened to my Uncle Ugo from, from uh, Canada. He, had a, he has this great Italian mm. accent when he speaks. My father always wow. had this great. Wow. And he, I, all, I, I specifically listened to the guys that were from Naples. Right. You know, I went and because... If you're from Sicily, yeah, the, the way Sicilians you, are yeah, a little different. You'll yeah. even when you're speaking English, there'll be you know instead of mani, it's moni. You know, mm -hmm. they say right. different different little nuances. Right, so right, I wanted right. to get it. I wanted to perfect it. So when you're with these actors, um, are you seeing that level of craft? Are you seeing a different? Are Absolutely. they doing things that you like? Oh, well, yeah, that. you know, it was interesting because um, you know Jim. I, which we admire so much, man, and, yeah. and I loved his process as well. He uh, he would get his nervousness out by doing like you know chicken noises and you know like <laughs> yelling at okay, the top yeah. of his okay, lungs, yeah, and, right. you know, just to get the you know to, just to just to get everything out, and break that start, viscera, you know, exactly, yeah. and start and relax into it, you know. Um, you know, I, interesting. I, I observed a lot of interesting things, like when he used to, we used to do these large these these long fucking protracted eating scenes right <laughs> and how, how you gotta tap so, that plate so yeah yeah so i i see him you know and i, I observed him a lot you know because i always admired his work even from afar 
before we worked together. And, you know, he would move, move the food right, around right. and look, go to eat and then, like, speak and then possibly eat a little bit and then put right. it back down. But you'll notice that he moves. Oh, yeah. I, I yeah, used to yeah. watch. I'm like, yeah. watch his continuity here. Watch how he's, <laughs> he's not going to eat that piece of meat till, right, it's, right. till that next cut. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So That's great. It was, there were little things like that. that did I you find, um, did you ever get, I'm interested to know as an actor, especially at that level where you're now, it's, it's, it's high stakes, HBO, big time stuff, mm-hmm. where you're on the set and you're in trouble a little bit and you got to reach for a tool. Did you ever, were you ever in a scene where it's like, this is the, you know, I got to work through this or, or how did you work with other actors when you, was it, was it a smooth sailing all the time or were there times where you, you work things out and how did you do that? Uh, if you can remember any. Yeah. I mean, hmm. well, I remember like, uh, the very first time I was on set right. and we were doing this, this brothel scene, you know, <laughs> going in and wreaking havoc and, you know, just collecting the money. You know, showing them what we're made of, right. you know what I mean, if you don't pay. So <laughs> it turns out um, the actor that I wind up shooting in the knee and that, that was, his name was Stephen Payne. How apropos, right? <laughs> yeah, right. But I, I actually knew him. We knew each other oh, okay. from, for many years. He was a theater actor. Great act. Great actor. Um, and so uh, that scene was very, uh, there, were, there were a lot of moving parts to it. Right. We shot the very last part of it first. And then there were hours and hours that went on. Okay. They had issues, you know, with other scenes. And, sure. and so it's, it's getting really late, like 3, 3.30 in the morning. Right. And that whole beginning scene where it's, it's, it's you know, like this uh, long, steady Tracking cam shot, shot. Yeah, right. basically all the way through. So we did a couple of rehearsals. You know, they had a breakaway glass, but, <laughs> you know, we didn't, obviously we only... Save it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a couple of rehearsals and, you know... Uh, script supervisor, okay, you know, uh, Federico, uh, you know, you hit the guy a certain way before. So, okay, no problem. Just let me know if there's anything else. He did another take. Federico, uh, we, we looked at it. You, you went through with the other leg. You cut, you broke the door. Right. You know, so I said, okay, anything else, let me know. I'll right, put right, it in. Right, right. And we did it in one take at 3.30 in the morning. Oh, Jesus. And uh, check the gate. Gate was clean, good. Which is film. Boom. Everybody, I mean, literally, yeah. Eileen Landris is one of our producers. Right. She came in, she goes, Federico, great job. You know, thank you. Me. Thank you for getting us here at yeah. 3.30 well, in the morning. Yeah, exactly. They yeah. would have had to go into another day of shooting. Sure, sure. Which would have costed. Absolutely. Yeah. But, well, that's that's interesting. So the, the technical, when when you start to apply the technical stuff to to the to the actor's craft and you you're slapping on the yeah it's not theater blocking anymore it's it's you know it's we got to we got to get the continuity right exactly gotta, and and uh, you know they always had a stunt man there but i said no just relax man i'm i'm going to it was johnson and tiempo and you know john man he's he's you know like 3 inch 3, three feet taller i mean yeah, uh, smaller than me <laughs> right. what are you like 6, exa- six three or 6 4 what no 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 uh, yeah. 6 1 6 1 so i'm yeah. I'm, uh, you know, I, I'm saying this is not going to look right. He's gonna, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. So, um, did you end I, up doing a lot of your stunts? In all of them. All of them. Well, even the one, the Pratt fall where I fall, where I, I, mm-hmm. I don't know if you remember this, but I think David Chase was, uh, was directing that episode. And for some reason, every time I fell, you know, because I, I had been shot, and my character's <laughs> right, been shot in right. the leg, so I was with crutches. Right. And uh, I say something like, uh, and it was snowing out, so it was like icy. Right. And so <laughs> my character has to fall. Right. So they were going to get a stunt man to do that. I go, no, I said, I can, I can do it. And, um, and so uh, every time I fell, you know, I, I, Tony, I parked the car all the way over there, you know, and I fall. Uh, he was dying laughing. For some reason, that fall just <laughs> cracked him the hell up. And uh, we, we shot that in Patterson, actually. Nice. It was downtown Patterson, New Jersey. Well, I want to I shift now into the, the third phase of your craft as we kind of get close to wrapping up here, which is... At some point along the way, yes, you're looking at going behind the camera. Right. Where does that happen? Why does that happen? When did you decide you I, wanted to be the filmmaker, the actual guy doing it? All right. Um, I never intended to direct. Okay. Never had any desire or anything like that. But I always observed. Every time I was on set, I was always, I was like a sponge, always kind of right. bring, you know, kind of taking things in and asking questions and stuff. So. Uh, over the years, I've retained a lot of that stuff, but never for no reason. I just kind of was curious, you know. And so one year, I was doing a film called El Cantante with Jennifer Lopez and Mark Anthony. 
And as I was, you know, finishing my work on that, that film, I, um, uh, there was, there was a, a, a production assistant that came over, this woman. She says, you know, Federico, I, I know you're an artist. I saw your work. You know, you're an amazing artist. She says, my boyfriend is, is an artist. And uh, he, uh, he's having a show. Here's this, you know, like uh, the address of the, the gallery. Would you come if I invite? I said, of course. Mm. Of course I would come. So I said, yeah, I would love to. And so I, I go to this, this exhibition. And I'm thinking it's going to be, you know, paintings that, you know, like it was graffiti ah. on canvas. Wow. It was, it blew me away. First of all, I had never, I had, had an, it brought me back to when I was a kid right. in Patterson going over this, this <laughs> trestle, looking down onto the tracks right, and seeing right. all this color, you know, on the, on the, you know, on the right. train track, on the, uh, what do you call it? On the, the trains. Yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so there was, it was all these like, you know, really cool, like bubble lettering mm -hmm. and whatever it was, you know, going back to when I was a kid. And so it, it just like said, wow, man, this, this stuff, this form of art is now in galleries. And it was uh, on my way back home. I just kind of started thinking back when I was a kid. And all of a sudden this, this idea came to me of this little kid, this little prodigy of uh, he was a... Um, a prodigy in, in that in, on the streets, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. Right. And his father, you know, we, we this this is this is a story that that I developed with a friend of mine, John Alfieri, who you may remember was uh, was uh, my assistant on, on okay the, uh, on the, the film, uh, yeah, Brooklyn Banker. Exactly. And so John uh, was a was a budding writer, you know, okay. an aspiring uh, screenwriter. And uh, he's done his own films since, and you know, he's 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 done really well for himself in that arena. And so um, I said, John, hey, man, I, I, I went to this thing. I explained the whole situation to him, this gallery opening. And I, uh, I got an idea for, for a short film. Mm -hmm. I said, uh, and I was thinking the whole time on the way back, I mean, who's going to direct this? You know? <laughs> you know? And I said, since I, you know, it's our story, I, I'll direct it and we'll write it. And he goes, okay, cool. So we wrote it. Mm -hmm. And it was called Tracks of Color. And it... It, it did really well. Uh, Jonna Palminteri was our main producer on it. She raised uh, she raised the money, the funds to do it. I shot it on 16 millimeter. All right. And uh, you know had a cinematographer from Italy come in, uh, Gianni Cigna, who I worked with on several projects. So what was that like? Your first time in Directing? that chair and working with a cinematographer and working with it departments. Was, it was interesting because. Since I'm an artist and a painter, it's, it's visual. Sure. And so is the form of art of filmmaking, right? right? And, and directing, it's visual. Yeah. So, you, you know, instead of brushes, you have actors as your implements, <laughs> That's right. right? That's and right. And your background, color, wardrobe, it's an ensemble effort when you're, when you're working. And you have to understand the story all the way through and each character's arc. Right. So, uh, I, uh, the, the advantage I had with the crew that I was working with is that... I, I'm an artist and I drew all of my, my storyboards. Mm. So I storyboarded the entire film. Of course. What a, what a nice advantage. You have so, a, a classical I, yeah, artist so in your storyboard. People knew where I wanted to, to, yeah. to have the light from. They knew, you know, a close up, you know, me, right. you know uh, medium shot, you know. They, they knew exactly what I was looking did for. Did you enjoy the process? I did. What? Because I it's, did. A, I, I, it's one thing to think it, and then once you start having to do it, all that well, work. It, I enjoyed it so much that I, that I wrote other short films. Right. I've done about six or seven short films. I wrote some commercials, and uh, they've been produced as well. Uh, you can probably find them online, too. Right. Uh, um, and so and my, my very first uh, feature effort was, uh, was in 2016. Right. And how that came about was... Um, I was at a, I was at a, a party for um, uh, you know a, a mutual friend uh, that that uh, the the writer that I wound up meeting at this party right. had, and um, he started talking to me about this idea that he had for for this film, and so I'm half listening and stuff because everybody has a script, everybody has an idea, <laughs> right. so I'm half listening, and then he said something that caught my ear, and it was you know it's in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and it's the the Gilio. I said. Julio, really? He goes, all right. I said, well, why don't you send me the script and you know, I'll read it. Months go by, uh, you know, and I still hadn't read the script. <laughs> and so, you know, things, things get yeah, in the happy. way. I, I get it. Get busy. Absolutely. Uh, my friend calls me, you know, the, the person who introduced us at his home. 
and uh, Stefano Kunta. He goes, they, he goes, uh, Federico, he goes, uh, by any chance, did you, did you read that script? You know, my friend, he's an attorney, he told you. Right. I said, ah, oh, you know what? I'll get to it right away. I'll get to it. So another month goes by, <laughs> and I hadn't read the script yet. Oh, wow, man. <laughs> so uh, I get a call from, um, from him again, from Steve. And he goes, uh, he goes, Federico, I said, ah, Steve, I'm sorry. He goes, no, no, I'm not calling because of that. He goes, I said, oh, uh, he goes, uh, how, you want to come to dinner, you know, you know, bring Yvonne and, you know, come to dinner at uh, Le Cirque and, you know, just me and my wife will be there, you know. Okay. So we go to dinner and as we're walking in, I see him, I see his wife and then I see somebody else at the table that I didn't quite, <laughs> now as I'm getting closer, I'm starting to recognize who it is. I'm like, oh shit, that's the guy I didn't read the script. <laughs> <laughs> it was Michael Rissigliano. Michael, yeah, right. So I sat down and I said, Michael, I'm really sorry. He goes, no, 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 it's okay, don't worry. He goes, and he started asking me questions, you know. He goes, I saw some of your short films. I really liked them. Stefano told me to see Tracks of Color. I saw the, the other one that you did and um, Keep Your Enemies Closer, all this mm -hmm. stuff. He goes, why would you do a short film? I said, well, there's many reasons. I said, you know, for me, uh, you know, I'd never directed before, and it's better to, to try that effort in a short film <laughs> version rather than a feature film, you know. <laughs> right. Uh, and see if, if you enjoy it, if you like it, you know, and for a screenwriter, you know, it's, it's almost a calling card for you as a screenwriter and also for producers. He goes, how much should a film like that cost? So we went over some costs. Right. He, he, he drinks his water. <laughs> he had right. water. And he goes, okay. He goes, all right, I'll, I'll give you a call. I'm going to write a short version of this and uh, I'll send it to you. Right. He goes, will you read it? I said, I'll read it. That tonight. I'll read. <laughs> how short? I'll read it. <laughs> I'll, I'll read it tonight. I went home. It was in my email. I read it called him, he said, I love it. I said, I love it. Got to make some changes here right. because as you know, <laughs> you can't put a feast in a short film yeah, right, right. unless the thing is happening and you have some right, shots. Right. But so we changed the entire opening. Remember that? Yeah. That opening? yeah. And this was your short film. It was called, at the time it was called Lily of the Feast. Lily of the Feast. That's uh, right. About uh, um, uh, a, banker. It was a banker in the, it was seventies. In the seventies, 1973 in with Brooklyn. a rare gift for memorizing numbers. Right, right. And how I came into the picture with you is that same guy wrote a play called Queen for a Day. Did he a write that? A Queen for a Day. Queen That's for right. a Day. And they called me. It was right after Hurricane Sandy. He saw me in some uh, action cop thing that I did, uh, film. And he's like, would you come in and read this part? And it's just a table read. I wasn't going to be cast in the thing. but yeah. And they had me read the lead guy who was like 65 you know, and I'm like, well, obviously I'm not going to get in, in this play, but <laughs> they want me to come read. And you came and I think you were part of the whole thing. That's where we first met. And I think that's where you were, you were I think you'd already done Lily of the Feast by that point, right? And then, uh, that's you, right. you know, you're going to blow it up into a feature. So did that short get you the... Exactly. That was like the, here's the, where we get the money to do the picture? Exactly. And that's what, that's one of the things that I told Michael. I said, Michael, this is a calling card also for producers to see... You know the product that they yeah, like a getting. proof of concept. Yeah, exactly. You know, like... Proof of concept, right? And so um, you know it was that short film that that got the financing for the feature. Right. And, and uh, what was that? Once you once you know that comes through, and now you okay, now I'm the captain of of the big ocean. Right. right. <laughs> what does that feel? You know, like? it was it was it was great. It was great because you know I grew up in the '70s. You know, right. uh, in the early '70s, I was a kid around that time, so I remember the clothes that they wore, right. um, and you know some of the films that were around that time oh. were, were great too. Yeah. And we had Paul Sorvino, uh, yes, playing Benny. Great cast. Uh, yeah. David Proval playing oh, Manny the Hand. Was, yes. Was very. I mean, like, what a great performance he delivered. Yeah. I mean, that was and. Um, Troy Garrity. Uh, Troy Garrity, Jane Fonda's son. <laughs> That's yeah, how I yeah. think of it, yeah. Well, Troy, Troy Garrity, um, I met with him uh, prior to that. I, you know, they, they, the producers wanted another actor for that role. Right. And I was adamant that this, this actor that they were interested in was not right for it. Mm. And, um, and so there were, I said, could you please send me some more right. tapes? I want to see it. And I, right. I kept looking at tapes, tapes, and all of a sudden there's one tape of this guy. I'm like, man, he disappears in all of his roles. Mm. You know, he, he was the the white guy in barbershop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he was yeah. like, you know, and I'm like, this guy, wait a minute, this other role that he did of this soldier who was gay, whoa, whoa, this mm. guy's fantastic. I called up the, one of the producers right away. I said, listen, I found this guy. He's phenomenal. <laughs> he, see if he'll meet with me. Because the other guy 
wouldn't meet with me unless we gave him the part. Wow. All right. Okay. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what do you mean you won't meet with me? I'm, I'm directing this film. <laughs> right. You know, give him the part, his agent said, and then we'll meet with you. Oh, said, yeah. Goodbye. I said, goodbye. So he flew in from California to meet with me. Wow. We met for almost two hours. That's great. His grandfather was Henry Fonda. Yeah. And he, uh, he said he saw my paintings and he reminded him, reminded him of his grandfather. And, uh, and I said, you, you're going to laugh, but I was represented by a gallery that represented your grandfather's works <laughs> Wow! way back when. Wow. And yeah, so, he did a great job. I mean, not, not your classic Italian looking, but I mean, yeah. he, he pulled it off. It was great. The, the, the picture was that, great. That meeting was so great, I hired him on the spot. Yeah. I said, I want you to do this role, man. He goes, you kidding me? Yeah. I said, really? I said, no question. I said, yeah. you're Santo. Yeah. And the fun thing for me when, when I got to do that is well, that was the one where the guy I played in that scene, he, he had lost his, he had his hand cut off in a gambling. Uh, That's right. So they, <laughs> Man, they, kept, hand got to they him. kept calling me up saying, well, take another picture of your hand. Send another with yeah. a ruler next to it. So they made a little stump for my hand. That's that right. Was a, That's that was right. a lot of, lot of fun. That's fun. I really man. enjoyed that. Um, all right. So I'm going to, I'm going to start winding this sucker down. So sure. Just some final gen general questions for, you know, the, the folks out there who, who don't do what we do mm -hmm. and maybe for some who want to do what we do. What little bits of advice, aside from what we touched on, yeah. would you give to the aspiring artist, the one who wants to be the painter, the filmmaker? What, what's the first step for that 14-year-old kid who's yeah, watching? Yeah. Well, I, I, you know, I would say the first step is, uh, is passion. I mean, you have, to, you have to be passionate about what you're doing, and you really have to kind of um, make the decision that this is what you want to do in life. You know, it's, it's got to be that dramatic. It's got to be that drastic mm. because it's a discipline, like I said earlier. You have to devote your, your, your time, your life to, to the craft right. and, um, and learn everything that there possibly is to learn about it and be like a sponge. Just take everything in. And if you get that opportunity, it, it's, you know, I've heard this many times, you know, uh, success is when uh, opportunity meets preparation. Exactly, right. So when you're prepared and that opportunity knocks on your door, you're going to get that role. You're going to get that right. job. I feel strongly about that. Right. And I think the, what, like, what I come away with, one of the big lessons from you is, uh, uh, is that reminder of that, of that tenacity, that sort of be bold and mighty forces will come to your aid, jump off the edge of it and, you know, with no, with almost yeah. an ignorant, you know, uh, t attitude to it, where it's just like I got to do it. I don't That's know it. where it's going to go, yeah. but something will, something will reward me for for that effort, for that courage. I grew up in Patterson, New Jersey. There weren't many avenues to get out of that place, you know. <laughs> and I always thought, man, you know, if I could, if I could become a famous artist, or you know, get into theater and you know, do some great work in theater or something like that, you know, I always had these like as a kid, you always have these delusions of grandeur, you know. Right. But sometimes they can be a reality, you know. Yeah. And you know, if if there's a young person who's getting into it and you know, has has that that fire and that that um, uh, that desire to to do this, to get into acting, do it for the right reasons. Don't do it to become famous. Don't right. don't do it to to you know to become rich because that doesn't happen normally. Right, it it right. may happen, but that's not the reason to get into it. The right. reason to get into it. Is because you can't do anything else in your life except for doing that and um, you know always come prepared always know your lines come prepared and um, you'll you'll do well so what's next for you Federico what are you what, are, are you are you still uh, really deep into the the filmmaking part of it is the is the is the illustrator in you still taking over where are you now what are you looking to do what do you want to do what would you love to do well uh, all of it. <laughs> it's, the, the time is always a factor, yeah. you know. You, as you get older, you, you realize that uh, your time is very valuable, you know. And there's always a million people that are, um, you know, after you for different things. You know, there's charity events, which I love to give back to. Uh, but then when you, then there's, there's so many that it becomes overwhelming. Uh, you know, there's friends, family, uh, there's so many things. But what I want to do is um, I would really love to, uh, to do a one-man show as far as painting. 
mm. uh, really focus on larger paintings, maybe figurative stuff, you know, uh, portraits of friends, mm. people that are around me that are interesting people, right. interesting faces. Um, as far as uh, directing, uh, I, 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 I will be directing a film that we mentioned earlier. Well, it's, it, was a, it was a play called uh, A Queen for a Day. Oh. And I've been asked by the same producers and, and writer to direct that film. Oh, fantastic. So hopefully That's a, That was a great piece. I, I thought it was a great script. It's a great script. And very yeah. uh, timely. Ah, uh, yes. You know, topical exactly. for now. Yeah. Exactly, yep. yep. So that, uh, as far as directing, you know, I have uh, projects that have been... Uh, that have been given to me that I have uh, that I'll be doing down the road, and uh, as far as acting, which I absolutely love, I love creating a character. I'm doing a film that's coming up called um, "The Mick and the Trick," <laughs> and uh, lead actor is uh, Peter Green, a very good friend of mine. It's uh, directed by Tom Danucci, who uh, who directed a film called Vault. Uh, and really good film that took place. Uh, it's a, based on a true story. Took place up in uh, Rhode Island, mm. and um, I play a, uh, a dirty detective. I've been playing a lot of detectives lately. <laughs> All I don't right. know why? Dirty ones. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah this this one's one is dirty. dirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I played a couple of clean ones. But, right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that, um, and then an, another film I'm shooting up in Rhode Island um, called The Family Affair or something Fantastic. like that. Fantastic. It's a, it's a mob comedy. Fantastic. Well, I'm glad you're working. I'm glad you're getting through all this. One last thing. Where can people see your work? Is there a website or something where yeah, they can see? Yeah, people can go to uh, firstdibs.com. First uh, Dibs. Uh, first Dibs, like the number one ST and then dibs. Okay. Dot com. That's where some of my work is being sold through a gallery. Okay. Uh, my gallery, uh, you know, gallery that handles some of my work is down in Red Bank, New Jersey. Okay. They can go there. I don't know if galleries are open right <laughs> yeah, now. Right. But, uh, they can see some original works there. Uh, it's called the Chetkin Gallery, mm -hmm. um, owned by a really nice couple. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and then you can go on uh, Federico Castelluccio paintings.com. Fantastic. And you can see some uh, works from the past and some, some new works as well. Well, it's beautiful. And, and just, to, just to echo what you said, one of the most valuable things is time. And I super appreciate you giving me this amount of time to sit here with you. You're an amazing artist on so many different uh, disciplines and so many different levels. It was a pleasure working with you. It was a great pleasure talking to you. And I, I'm sure people got just tremendous enlightenment out of this conversation. I thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me over, Frederick. Russ, it. let me tell you, man, um, you know, it's, it's a pleasure. I know we've been trying to do this for a long time. And I'm, I'm happy that we, took, we found the time to do this as well. Um, and I'm sure that we'll be working together again. <laughs> I hope so. All right. Fantastic. All right, man. A pleasure. Thanks. You got it.